Hey, good morning, friends. Welcome back. We are doing lesson four for Wit and Wisdom. So our focus question is, why do people admire Perot's Cinderella? And our content framing question today is, what is happening in Cinderella? So today in our lesson, we're going to continue our study of elements. Remember, elements are present in works of art, such as line and media, and as well as in most of our Cinderella stories, such as good and evil characters. We are going to um, practice and identify who is telling the story. And we are going to work with our characters in these stories. So let's get busy with our lesson. So I'm gonna share my screen with you. Okay, share my screen. All right, let's get rid of all these things here so we can watch our video. There we go. Hello friends, and welcome back to Wit and Wisdom in the Sink. My name is Tanisha Spears and I'm excited to jump into our lesson for today. But before we do, let's make sure you have your materials ready. For this lesson, you will need a copy of the text, Cinderella, adapted by Marcia Brown, if you have it. You'll need your Wit and Wisdom in Sync journal and a pencil. We will also be using handout 2A, which is the fluency homework handout, but I'll show that to you on the screen. Pause the video now if you need to gather your materials. Be good. In previous work, you had an opportunity to look at similarities and differences in two works of art. You also had a chance to create a story map for the text Cinderella, adapted by Marsha Brown. Today, you will continue to think about what is happening in the text, as well as think about the importance of using evidence to form an opinion. All right, the question that will frame our learning for today is, what is happening in this text? I'd like you to read it with me this time. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Let's read. What, what is, is happening, happening in, in this text? So today you will be looking at another way to organize what is happening in a text, specifically the Cinderella text adapted by Marsha Brown. Now, there are certain elements that are common in all Cinderella stories. Take a look at the chart on your screen. This is an element of Cinderella stories chart. Let's read of those elements. Good characters. Good characters are characters who do kind and helpful things. Evil characters. Mm -hmm. Evil characters bad are stuff. characters who do very bad things. Magical element. Now, a magical element is a magical person, animal, or object that can do impossible or improbable things. And lastly, proof of identity. Proof of identity is something that shows who someone is. Got it? Mm -hmm. I'll repeat it one more time. Good characters are characters who do kind and helpful things. Evil characters are characters who do very bad things. A magical element is a magical person, animal, or object that can do impossible or improbable things. And proof of identity is something that shows who someone is. Got. All right, friends. Now, I am going to read a scene from Cinderella from handout 2A, the fluency homework handout. You see it on your screen. As I am reading, you're going to look for elements of Cinderella's stories. Now, I am going to read the stepsister and Cinderella's lines. So again, be sure you are listening for elements of Cinderella's stories. Okay. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Listen carefully. Cinderella, now wouldn't you just like to go to the ball? Oh, you're making fun of me. A ball is not for such as I. You are right. Cinder seat at a ball? <laughs> How people would laugh. Now, what elements do you notice in the scene that I just read? I'll ask again, what elements of Cinderella stories do you notice 
in the lines that I just read. Think. Now share with your learning partner or share aloud. What character or what elements did you see? Well, I saw a good character being Cinderella. And then I saw an evil character, the stepsisters, both one and two. Did you share? I really wish I could have heard what you said. Here's what I noticed. There are good and evil characters in the lines that I've read. Yes. So I put Cinderella as a good character on the chart, and I added her stepsisters under the evil characters. Mm -hmm. Now, take a look at the two boxes you see at the bottom of the screen. You'll see the words black paper in one box and wand in the other. You are going sort these two elements into the chart as well. Let's take a look at the glass slipper first. Hmm. Where does the glass slipper belong on our chart? In other words, is it a magical element or proof of identity? Hmm. What I'd like you to do is point to the column where you think it belongs and remember to point gently. Are you pointing? I wish I could see where you pointed. I pointed to proof of identity, and I pointed to proof of identity because Cinderella used the slipper to prove that she was the princess mm -hmm. at the ball. Now, look at the word wand at the bottom of the screen. Where does the wand belong on our chart? Point to the correct column and explain to your learning partner why it belongs in that column. Why does wand belong in the magical element? Is it because that's what the fairy godmother used to change Cinderella into a beautiful princess? I am sure you said that the wand is a magical element. And it is a magical element in the story because it's used to turn a pumpkin into a carriage and make a beautiful dress for Cinderella. Let's take a look at our chart. We see that it lists Cinderella as a good character, the stepsisters as evil characters, the wand as an element and the glass slipper as proof of identity. So the text Cinderella adapted by Marsha Brown has all the elements of a Cinderella story. Now, there are many other examples of good and evil characters and magical elements in the story as well. And I encourage you to notice them as you continue to work with the text. All right, friends, if you need to, Pause the video to take a moment to stretch or take a quick break. When you are done, unpause the video. Right, friends, so now you are going to be using evidence just like the information that you just collected on the elements of Cinderella's story chart to form opinions about the text that you read. And as you do this, you are going to be thinking about this question. Why is considering evidence to form an opinion important? Now, let's take a moment to make sure we understand the word opinion. Opinion is what someone thinks or feels about something. I'll say it one more time. Opinion is what someone thinks or feels about something. Now, people express their opinions by using opinion statements, such as, I think funny books are the best books to read. But there's one thing I want you to remember. An opinion statement does not state a fact. It tells what someone thinks or feels about something. All right, friends, let's put this into practice now. You are going to listen to some statements and decide if they are opinions. What I'd like you to do is be sure that you listen to each statement carefully. And I want you to stand or put your thumb up if you think the statement is an opinion. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Listen. Summer is the best season. Hmm. What do you think? Is that an opinion or not? Hmm. I'm sure you put your thumb up. That is an opinion because remember, an opinion is what someone thinks or feels about something. So saying that summer is the best season is an opinion. Let's go to the next one. I ate cereal for breakfast. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Is this an opinion? Mm 
-mm. What do you think? I bet you didn't stand or put your thumb up because I ate cereal for breakfast this morning is not an opinion. It is a fact. It is what someone actually did. Let's keep going. We live in the United States. Hmm. Mm -mm. I'm sure you said it. It is not an opinion because we, in fact, live in the United States. What about this one? I think baseball is the best sport to play. Hmm, is that an opinion? Hmm, did you put your thumb up? I'm sure you did because that is an opinion that someone had of baseball being the best sport. Let's try one more. Jumping rope is the most fun thing to do at recess. Hmm, is that an opinion? Mm -hmm. What do you think? I bet you put your thumb up because jumping rope is the most fun thing to do is what someone thinks or feels about something. Now that you know what an opinion is, you are going to learn how to use evidence to form an opinion. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about and evidence. It's important for a writer to use evidence to form an opinion and explain their reasons to readers. So what you need to do now is I want you to think, what type of people are Cinderella's stepsisters? Think about that. What type of people are Cinderella's stepsisters? Now, before you decide on your opinion, let's gather some evidence to answer that question. I want you to look, as I reread the scenes we heard earlier, and as I'm reading, I want you to pay careful attention to what the stepsisters say. Are you ready? Listen again. Cinderella, now wouldn't you just like to go to the ball? Oh, you're making fun of me. A ball is not for such as I. You are right. Cinder seat at a ball. <laughs> how people would laugh. Now, how would you describe what the stepsisters said and did? Think with your learning partner or just share aloud. The stepsisters are making fun of her, aren't they? They're being mean to her. I wonder, did you say that the stepsisters mock and tease Cinderella? I'm sure you probably did. So let's record that as our first piece of evidence. It will help us form an opinion about what kind of people the stepsisters are. Now, let's collect some more evidence to help us form an opinion about what kind of people the stepsisters are. Listen as I read another scene, and again, pay careful attention to what the stepsisters say. Again, I'm going to read the dialogue between the stepsisters and Cinderella. Listen carefully. How long you are? If you had come to the ball, you would have not been bored. I can tell you, a most beautiful princess came. What was the name of this princess? No one knows. The king's son would give anything to know who she is. She was then so beautiful. Mademoiselle Jovet, lend me your yellow outfit that you wear every day. Really? I like that. And then my clothes to a filthy cinder seat like you? Hmm. How would you describe what the stepsister said and did? Share with the learning partner or share aloud. Well, they wouldn't lend her clothes to Cinderella. That was one thing. But they belittled her, didn't they? It's like, why would I let you borrow my clothes for? I really wish I could have heard what you shared. I wonder, did you say that Javette would not let Cinderella borrow a dress? So let's record that as a second piece of evidence, because again, it will help us form an opinion about what kind of people the stepsisters are. All right, let's listen to one more piece of evidence. 
The stepsisters were delighted with themselves, busy as you please choosing their costumes and headdresses to go with them. More work for Cinderella, for it was she who starched their linen and puffed their ruffles. So now, hmm, how would you describe what the stepsisters did? One more time, how would you describe what the stepsisters did? Share with a learning partner or just share aloud. They were delighted because they were making her busy, weren't they? She was having to choose costumes and headdresses and starch their linens and puff their ruffles. She was just busy, busy, busy. Now, I wonder, did you say that they made Cinderella do all the chores? I'm sure you probably said that. Let's review what the stepsisters do. We know that they mock and tease Cinderella. They do not let Cinderella borrow a dress and they make Cinderella do all the chores. So now I want you to think about the question on the screen, read it with me. What type of people are the stepsisters? Now, based on the evidence we gather, what type of people are the stepsisters? Hmm. Hmm. What's your opinion? Now, what I wanna remind you is I want you to use the sentence frame, I think the stepsisters are, and your evidence when you are thinking about your answer. All right? What I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to write a few words in your journal to complete the sentence frame. And remember, the sentence frame is, I think the stepsisters are, and then you would fill in the blank line. Are you ready? Pause and write a few words in your journal to complete the sentence frame. All right, my friends, in your journal, you need to complete that sentence frame. I think the stepsisters are blank. Okay, now that you have completed your sentence frame, you are going to review the evidence to see if there is enough to support your opinion. Listen as I review the evidence. As I'm reviewing, I want you to put a thumbs up or a thumbs down to tell whether the evidence supports your opinion. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Here's the first piece of evidence we collected. The stepsisters mock and tease Cinderella. Does it support your opinion statement or not? All right, let's do another one. Mademoiselle Jovet did not let Cinderella borrow a dress. Does that support your opinion or not? And one more piece of evidence. They make Cinderella do all of the chores. Does it support your opinion or not? Now, do you think there is enough evidence here to support your opinion statement about the stepsisters? Give a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Remember, using evidence or reasons helps support your opinion and it also helps people understand why you think the way that you do. You are now going to record or write one piece of evidence that supports your opinion about what type of people the stepsisters are. And you're going to explain how the evidence supports your opinion. I'm gonna say it one more time. You are going to record or write one piece of evidence to support your opinion, and then you will explain how the evidence supports your opinion. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Pause the video now to record or write. All right, my friends, you need to write evidence to support your opinion of the stepsisters being unkind to Cinderella. What can you pull out of that fluency? What did they do to her? Okay, write that out in your journal. All right, awesome first graders. Did you record or write? If you did not, I suggest you go back and do so. Nice job identifying evidence to support your opinion and continuing to think about what is happening in this text. In the next lesson, 
you will examine evidence to form an opinion about another character, the fairy godmother. But until then, be kind and do something great because you are capable of greatness. All right, so let's, I am going to go into our fluency because we need to practice that. So if you will have this, it's 2A fluency. And this is adapted from Cinderella by Marcia Brown. Narrator, Cinderella is helping the stepsisters get ready for the ball. Cinderella, now wouldn't you like to go to the ball? Oh, you are making fun of me. A ball is not for such as I. You are right, cinder seat at a ball. <laughs> How people would laugh, both stepsisters laugh. Okay, now I'm gonna go one down. That was A and here's another one. Narrator, Cinderella arrives home from the ball first. Her two stepsisters knock on the door. Cinderella runs to let them in. How late you are. If you had come to the ball, you would not have been bored. I can tell you a most beautiful princess came. What was the name of the princess? No one knows. The king's son would give anything to know who she is. She was then so beautiful. Mademoiselle Javant, lend me your yellow outfit that you wear every day. Really? I like that. Lend my clothes to a filthy cinder seat like you? Hmm. Okay, so you've got that Cinderella there to read for your fluency. All right, before we go any further, let's talk about who is telling the story? Who is telling the story at certain points in the story, okay? So I'm gonna go to page seven here. And I am going to read page seven. And when you think Cinderella is speaking, I want you to thumbs up, okay? So here we go. As for me, said the younger, I have nothing but my usual petticoat to make up for that. I shall wear my cloak of flowered gold diamond circlet, which is not to be sneezed at either. They sent for the best hairdresser to pile their curls into two horns. None but the best beauty patches would do. They called in Cinderella to ask her advice for she had very good taste in these matters. Cinderella gave them the best advice in the world and even offered to dress their hair, which of course was what they really wanted in the first place. While she was working over them, they would say to her, Cinderella, now wouldn't you like to just go to the ball? Oh, you're making fun of me. A ball is not for such as I. You are right, cinder seat at a ball, how people would laugh. And they laughed themselves at the very thought. I hope you put your thumb up on that one because Cinderella was talking. The two sisters were in such a twitter of excitement that for two days they hardly had time to eat. They strained and snapped a dozen corset strings, pulling them too tight in order to shrink their waist. All day long, they paraded in front of the looking glass. Good. All right, so we identified Cinderella speaking there. Good. Mm, let's see here. Let's move on from this. Okay, and we're gonna go on into our deep dive. So let me expand out because I'm gonna use the screen behind me. And remember, we've been talking about conjunctions and how they glue sentences together, okay? Move it there. All right, so let's think about our conjunctions that we've been talking about. What conjunction is used to show opposites? Do you remember? Hmm, how about the word but? 
Good. What conjunction is used to explain why? Because. What conjunction is used to show options? About or. And what conjunction is used to combine similar things? And, good. All right, so how do we use conjunctions in a sentence? Remember, the conjunction combines two things. So on your whiteboard, I want you to write the conjunction that goes in these five sentences, all right? So number one, Lisa wants to go to the store Blank wants to go to the playground. What word could you put there? You could put and, couldn't you? Okay. We were going home. Blank, we couldn't find the car. What could you put there? But, great job. Number three, John wanted to buy some pizza. Blank, he was hungry. Because, it's a little blank for a big word. Number four, do you want to go shopping? Blank, play a game. Or, good. And number five, it was snowing outside. Blank, I put on boots. So, great job, guys. Let me erase this. All right, so let's review our conjunctions. We have and that combines similar things. An example, Cinderella went to the ball and lost her shoe. We have the word but, it combines things that do not go together. Like the prince wanted to marry the girl he met, but he didn't know her name. We have or, that shows options. Cinderella had to clean or she would get in trouble. We have because, what explains why. The example, the stepsisters were mean to Cinderella because they were jealous. Then we have the word so, it shows purpose or reason. The example, the fairy godmother made Cinderella a dress so she could go to the ball. Okay. All right, my friends, that is the end of our lesson. Thank you for working so hard, and I will see you back here tomorrow.